Ομοσπονδία μας. Η δεύτερη διάλεξη του κυρίου Σέρεγκαρτ από τη Σουηδία. Conjunctival melanoma now and in the future. We're waiting for my slides to appear on this. So I, first, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me. I think it's fabulous to be back in, Greek, uh, in Greece and, and for the first time to be in Thessaloniki. So it's a really spectacular trip. So I'm going to talk to you about something completely different. It's got nothing to do with refractive surgery. It's, it's a conjunctival melanoma. It's an ocular surface disease. And I unfortunately don't make money out of this. This is a conjunctival melanoma occupying most of the conjunctival sac. So those, some of these tumors, of course, most of them would be smaller than that. So it's, it's a very rare disease. It's 0.5 per million in the Western world. In Sweden, we used to have two to three cases every year. Now we're looking at something like four to five cases every year in a population of nine and a half million people. Greece got about 10 and a half million people, so that gives you some idea about this rarity of this disease. There's a large difference. A conjunctiva is UV exposed, but only a fraction of the conjunctiva is actually UV exposed. Most would not be UV exposed. And I would argue that this disease is more akin, more like cutaneous skin melanoma than it is to UV melanoma. So the idea with my talk is to show that the difference is between conjunctival and, and UV melanoma. And because part of the conjunctiva is not UV exposed, you can actually use conjunctival melanoma as a um, model to study UV exposure because uniquely you have Part of the conjunctiva being UV exposed and part of the conjunctiva not being UV exposed. Right, so I will try and go back actually, I can do that. So I will put UV radiation on trial and charge it with inducing conjunctival melanoma. And you will all be in the audience, will be the judges, you will be in the jury to decide if this is correct or not. So let's start with the prosecution arguing its case. Arguments in favor that UV radiation induces conjunctival melanoma would be that its incidence is rising in parallel to that of skin melanoma, that it's more frequently occurring in the UV exposed portion of the conjunctiva, and that the rise we are seeing in conjunctival melanoma is largely derived from the UV exposed part of the conjunctiva and that what we call conjunctival melanosis, primary acquired melanosis with atypia, basically parallel a skin entity called lentigo maligna. So there are similarities. And finally, that conjunctival melanoma harbors UV-inducible mutations, mutations that will cause melanoma, unlike uveal melanoma. So if you're looking at UVL melanoma, the incidence is largely stable. This is the Swedish data, and basically it shows you that there are no, no, basically no difference in the incidence. It stays stable over a number of years. This is the uh, skin and eye melanoma incidence in Sweden throughout a number of years. You can see the difference. This is the skin melanoma. These are different time periods. This is eye melanoma, and you can regard eye melanoma as a surrogate measure for uveal melanoma because conjunctival melanoma is so rare. So this is largely uveal melanoma. You can, anyone can appreciate that there are significant differences between skin melanoma incidence and uveal melanoma incidence. Skin melanoma being one of the most rapidly increasing cancers in the world with something in Sweden, something like 4 to 5 percent increase every year. And this is Denmark plotting skin melanoma versus UV melanoma incidence. You can see the difference. Skin melanoma is rising rapidly. UV melanoma stays the same. Now, what about conjunctival melanoma, the very rare disease we have in the ocular surface? So this is what you're looking at, the age standardized incidence, correcting that the population gets older. You see a significant increase. In the early 60s, we had something like 0.1, 0.2 per million. And now we're looking at more than 0.5 per million in the 90s or early 2000s. So this increase is staggering. And it's the same in men as it is in women. 
we have a significant increase of coin entitlement among both men and women. And in the United States, you have largely similar data with an increase from something like 0.25 per million, rising to more than 0.5 per million over a 30-year period. And in Finland, they have noted that the conjunctival melanoma incidence parallels skin melanoma. So this is conjunctival melanoma, this is skin melanoma, and you have the same rise in incidence for both of these diseases. So this is for evidence number one. Evidence number two is that conjunctival melanoma is more frequent in the UV exposed portion of the eye of the conjunctiva. Notably, most of the UV radiation actually never reaches the back of the eye. It's been filtered off by the cornea and by the lens. So at the retina or at the uvea, you don't get very much UV radiation, in particular not very much of the UVB portion of the spectrum, which is believed to induce melanoma. But in the conjunctiva, you would have all of these, except that, of course, parts of the conjunctiva, the subtarsal portion and that part of the bulbar portion that's covered by the eyelid, wouldn't get any UV radiation at all. In fact, if you're looking at um, the uh, conjunctiva, you can see that it's only these triangular portions of the bulbar conjunctiva that would be UV exposed. The large portion of the conjunctiva is actually not UV exposed. So basically, it's putting it to you that 5% of the surface area of the conjunctiva generates some 80% of conjunctival melanoma. So these conjunctival melanoma then appear, typically appear, in these portions of the bulbar conjunctiva that are UV exposed. So by and large, when we plotted this, most of it would be bulbar in the area which is UV exposed. So 80% of conjunctival melanoma arises from the UV exposed portion of the conjunctiva, which is actually only a small fraction of the total uh, conjunctival area. So if we look at evidence number three, conjunctival melanoma increase largely occurs in the UV exposed conjunctiva. So when we looked at the differences, uh, you, we noted that the increase we saw, the significant increase, nearly all occurred in the UV exposed portion of the conjunctiva, whereas there were only a few more cases in the UV non-exposed conjunctiva that we now know is the, the large portion of the conjunctiva. So you can notice the staggering difference. Not only do we have more conjunctival manoma, nearly all the increase is in the portion that is UV exposed. Now there is another evidence. Lentigo malignant of the skin is a disease which is associated with chronic UV exposure. And conjunctival melanosis with atypia, primary acquired melanosis with atypia, as we know it, closely actually resembles that of lentigo maligna. This is skin, this is lentigo maligna, and this is where you have the atypical melanocytes. If you're looking, that's another part of the skin, you have it more, more of atypia here, the basal layer. If you're looking at the conjunctiva, again you have the same variant, the same sort of histopathology with most of the atypical melanocytes arising from the epithelial layer. This is more of a atypia, some would call this melanoma in situ. So this is looking at the skin and at the conjunctiva. They look very much similar, don't they? And if you look at this clinically, this is a patient with lentigo maligna, you know, the regular flat spots occurring here. This is a patient with a primary acquired melanosis with atypia. Very similar. And again, if you have melanosis, it may actually progress to lentigo maligna or vice versa. If you have lentigo maligna, it may just get across the eyelid and cause primary acquired melanosis of the conjunctiva. So it's, it's not a disease that respects the, the boundaries. And finally, Conjunctival melanoma harbors UV inducible mutations, unlike what happens in UVL melanoma. So these are, this is a plot, a very recent data from last year, about the genetic profile of UVL melanoma and conjunctival melanoma. So you can note these are the red ones, are the, the gains you have in chromosomes, the green are the losses in chromosomes. So in UVL melanoma, you have a significant loss of monosomy 3, significant loss of chromosome 3 in a, in a large portion of uvea melanoma, 
and there's nothing like this in conjunctival myeloma. There are some similarities, but largely the genetic profile of conjunctival melanoma and uveal melanoma are distinctly different. If you're looking at skin, this is a skin melanoma. The pathogenesis is largely that either you have nevi, which are found to be BRAF mutant, mutants in the BRAF gene, a gene that's UV inducible, and then eventually you get a melanoma. If you have intermittent sun exposure, this will grow on to get a melanoma. Or if you have chronic sun exposure, you may have non-BRAF mutant uh, uh, melanoma that eventually will co generate the lentigo malignant of some type. Now looking at uveal melanoma, there are basically no mutations of BRAF or RAS, though although the same pathway is activated. But if you look at conjunctival melanoma, you have BRAF mutations in something like 25 to 50 percent of these patients, distinctly different from that of uveal melanoma. And this is a very recent paper from last year saying that basically the wild type, the normal, the non-mutated BRAF or NRAS is, a, is occurring only in about half of patients. The other half of patients would have mutations in BRAF or NRAS. So if you're putting this into the molecular phase, this is what you have in uveal melanoma activated through the GNAC or the um, GNA11 proteins. So you have mutations in the, these proteins in something in total in about 80%. Now, if you go on to conjunctival melanoma, we now know that in difference, you have mutations in RAS or RAF genes in something like half of patients, quite unlike what you have in UVA melanoma that's activated through this pathway. Though, actually, both of these cause an increase in the downstream MEK protein, and this has potential therapeutic implications because in conjunctival melanoma you could either block the RAS or RAF genes if it's mutated, or you could block the MEK using MEK inhibitors that would block this MEK protein, or you could do both approaches. And there are a number of papers around showing that the clinical efficacy of RAF inhibitors in BRAF mutant melanoma, this is largely skin melanoma, there's recent uh, in skin melanoma, there are now uh, drugs out that are targeting BRAF mutations. As you now know, you would have in half of patients with conjunctival melanoma, but it would be a waste to give these drugs to patients with non-BRAF uh, mutant uveal melanoma. <laughs> and this is a very recent trial from last year with showing in skin melanoma, BRAF mutated melanoma, you can treat that with drugs that target these specific mutations. So by basically, to sum this up, the, uh, this pathway, the, the RAS, RAF, MEK pathway, which is central in uh, conjunctival melanoma, is there's a lot of alternative mechanisms. Now, this pathway may not be the only one we need to target to uh, increase survival in conjunctival melanoma. So life is complex. So basically, the deliberations on the euro suggest, I put it to you, that overwhelming evidence suggests that UV radiation is guilty as charged for conjunctival melanoma, but not for UV melanoma. Though evidence is largely circumstantial, I would say that on this case, the jury is probably still out and the verdict is pending. So by this, I'd like to thank you very much for this presentation. These are just a few of the people that actually done most of the work. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you all in Vienna for the SOE for the European Society of Ophthalmology, June 6 to 9 next year, 2015. Thank you. Thank you, too. Itriti di Alexi me tungirio Siganon, Presbyopia.